Welcome to the channel. My name is Samuel Barless. Here we talk about networking and cybersecurity. First of all, any opinions expressed in this video are my own and do not necessarily represent opinions of past, present, or future employers. Uh, they also don't reflect any opinions of anyone else necessarily except for me. So, uh, welcome. And uh, we're going to talk today about the Cisco CCNA roadmap. Uh, some news recently came out and I want to address it. I want to talk to not only my students, but other students, uh, anyone else else out there uh, looking to maybe get to CCNA or maybe renewing your CCNA um, and hopefully answer some questions that have come up in the past when Cisco has made these changes uh, and hopefully help you prepare for the future, right? So jumping in here, uh, this is an article in the Cisco Learning Network. I'll go ahead and link it down in the description. So feel free to click it and read through the whole thing. There's a uh, pretty extensive frequently asked questions down here. Lots and lots of information if you want those details. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, jump in a little bit here. So a few things that they mentioned here about their roadmap, how they're going to do this going forward. Uh, anything in orange is going to be their review phase. Uh, in the blue is when they're going to announce it. So they'll let us know uh, what's going to be on there, right? They'll give us revised exam topics and release notes. Uh, and then the green is going to be they're actually going to publish the exam. So one of the first things that I want to let you know is usually Cisco has a delay between when they publish a new exam and when they retire an old one. So usually there's a little bit of a delay, maybe a few months. That way you can wrap up your studies and go ahead and get that certification. And then you can uh, not have to study the new topics that maybe weren't on the exam before. So <clears throat> with that, uh, let's go over a few of the things here. You know, right now we're at the end of 2022, so we'll be jumping into 2023 pretty soon here. Um, and so they'll be reviewing, you know, some uh, looks like CCMP enter security and enterprise. Uh, they'll look at some data center stuff and collaboration. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm really going to focus on the CCNA. You'll see that come up early 2023. They're going to start looking at the CCNA in early 2023 and evaluating, reviewing it to see um, from their opinion, right, what is more needed in the industry. They need to remove some stuff that's irrelevant. Yeah, add some stuff that's more relevant today. Uh, they typically talk to industry leaders. They talk to some of their, uh, probably their customers and uh, other people in the industry, and they ask them, hey, what do you need in an entry-level networking engine? And so that's really the goal of Cisco, is to hopefully give uh, those entry-level network engineers the skills they need to have the job, but also to keep employers happy, right? They need employers to be on board and to view the CCNA as valuable, or else uh, they're not gonna hire these uh, students that are going to get their CCNA. This is important and makes the CCNA more valuable, right? Because if you're not evaluating, especially with the way technology advances, um, then you can cost, uh, very, very quickly get behind uh, in current technology. We've seen that with other certifications. Uh, Cisco's trying to get, um, get ahead in this case. Some cases have been a little slower to remove some of the older technology, but at the same time, uh, sometimes those older technologies are still pretty prevalent uh, in particular industries. And so, you know, it's one of those kind of catch 22s, right? You know, do you remove all the old stuff, but then no one knows how to work on the old stuff that's still in use or, you know, vice versa, right? So um, anyway, there's no perfect answer, right? So, um, you know, skills in the CCNA, uh, I think that I've used probably 80% of my knowledge that I learned in my CCNA course uh, when I first took it. Uh, but you know, other people might not feel the same, right? If you go and take your CCNA and you end up on the service provider side, the technologies they use are very different. Um, you may not use as much of that uh, knowledge as you thought you would. Uh, whereas if you end up in a traditional kind of enterprise network, more than likely you're gonna see most of the technologies um, or at least a form or fashion of them uh, from the CCNA studies. So your experience may vary. Anyway, jumping into this roadmap really quickly here, uh, you'll see here in Q3, we're going to have them, uh, Q3, it's it's so strange. Beginning of 2023, I'm going to go by months because uh, their quarters do not align with, you know, January through December, uh, which confuses me. So I'm going to stay out of that. So February to April, they're going to be evaluating the CCNA. Now, May to July, they're going to be looking at um, announcing those changes, right? So they'll decide them and then they'll announce them. Now, this is the transitionary period that we typically... Uh, in Network Academy, we're going to get a sort of a, a supplemental uh, course that we're going to be able to offer 
um, as part of our CCNA curriculum. So you'll be able to uh, hopefully study through that transition and be prepared for the new test or the old test, uh, whichever one kind of aligns, because uh, be, you might be kind of in a weird, a weird time here, right? You're taking a class right as it's changing, and it's like, well, do I want to take it right after the class, or do I need to study a little bit more, do a little review? Um, so we can provide that supplementary material to you guys, students. Um, and also give time for the instructors, right? We need to sometimes study this technology. Um, I was lucky enough that at my day job, last time they changed the CCNA, uh, I used the technologies that they were talking about, REST APIs, JSON, those things I had used in production. When I saw it on the test, uh, I was talking to another instructor and they said, oh, I'm really gonna have to learn this automation stuff. You know, we just really never used it at my job. And so it's very unfamiliar to me. And I and they asked me about it and I said, well, I've been using this technology at work all the time. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, and so I was able to very, very quickly pick up on some of the new topics. Uh, of course, uh, you don't see it here, but I've got the book down there, the new book. I typically buy the new book, go through the new chapters, uh, maybe a few things to review. Uh, more of a book guy. I like reading. I feel like uh, I can get uh, more out of it if I, if I sit down and read as opposed to going through a video course or, or something like that. Um, but I like to uh, use multiple methods, so I typically do go through a video course as well just for review uh, and maybe some particular insight from an instructor uh, that has different experiences than I do, right? I come from a particular background uh, when it comes to my experience, and I hopefully provide some of that knowledge to you guys uh, but there is gaps in my knowledge, right? I've never worked for uh, certain types of industries. I've never worked in certain um, certain businesses that may have different needs uh, that I have not seen, right? So just keep that in mind. Having different perspectives is always helpful. Um, so I typically use reading as my primary method, and then I'll use a video course as kind of a secondary method. <clears throat> and then, of course, between August and October, somewhere in there, they're going to come out with the CCNA. Uh, this is their plan, right? It may not be set in stone, but um, this is their plan to come out with the new CCNA. And uh, by that time, hopefully, we'll have uh, everything ready for that. One of the things I want to mention also on this page, if I go up here, you'll see there's a sign up for automatic notifications. They can send you some emails, uh, let you know what's going on. Um, and hopefully get you kind of ahead of the ball. If you're currently taking CCNA classes, or you're planning on doing that in the very near future, or you're self-studying, um, I would absolutely recommend, hey, you know, sign up. Uh, if you don't want to use your personal email, maybe use your work email, you know, maybe use your student email. Um, it's not necessarily limited to uh, one or the other. So feel free to sign up, get some information uh, when they make those changes so that you're the best informed when you go and make the decisions for your career, right? Know, when you decide you want to schedule a test, uh, when you decide uh, what, what test you want to study for, because there may be some, some pretty different changes here. So I want to address a few questions as well. Um, you know, this video is going a little long, but I'm going to go ahead and try to wrap it up here. So what does this mean? Like, what does this really mean? Um, what's happening? Is Cisco changing everything? You know, what's going on? This is normal. Uh, this is very, very normal. Uh, one of the things that you know, I'll just reiterate here is Cisco does this every couple of years. This is pretty normal. Uh, I would say an average of every three years, they update the CCNA, uh, three to four years, maybe somewhere in there. Um, you know, it's not exact. Um, and I don't think it really should be exact, right? You can kind of uh, see as the, the needs of the industry change, hopefully Cisco is gonna reflect that uh, in their instructional material. Um, of course, this is Cisco's opinion of what's most valuable in the industry. Uh, there is going to be, obviously, I mean, they're not going to teach you about technologies that they don't have at Cisco. Um, so that's something to keep in mind that Cisco is going to teach you about Cisco technologies. Um, they're going to teach you a little bit about uh, some vendor agnostic stuff, right? Spanning tree is spanning tree. OSBF is OSBF. But they're going to teach you about, you know, things that are Cisco proprietary and may, uh, may leave out some things that uh, are not available through Cisco's platform. So keep that in mind. You know, it is a Cisco test. So it's going to have that Cisco flavor to it. Um, and that's just a reality there. So uh, what will we as instructors do about this? Um, you know, obviously, we're going to be updating our course content. We're going to hopefully come up with some supplemental content that's going to go along with those changes. 
uh, to be able to transition those who are currently studying um, into being able to take the full-on new test if uh, their studying goes beyond uh, when the old test is available. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be developing new courses for the new uh, for the new CCNA, right? So uh, we may not develop everything from the beginning, uh, but there's probably going to be some pretty substantial changes, uh, and we may need to develop some new content. That way, we stay relevant, right? And we're teaching you the information that you need in order to be successful uh, taking your CCNA and getting into the industry, or maybe getting a promotion. So the question that comes up a lot is. Should I wait? Should I stop studying? Do I need to stop studying now? And the answer is, that's probably a bad idea. One, because you lose your momentum. A lot of people, um, you know, it's it's a struggle to put something down and then come back to it later. You know, it sounds great, but then we never seem to get around to it. Uh, I have that habit all the time. I put down a book. I've read like four or five chapters out of it. I put it down and go, I'll get to this later. And I never pick up the book again. Uh, maybe I will a few years later. I hopefully will finish some of the books I've got sitting on my shelf with bookmarks in them halfway through uh, that I haven't touched in probably a year. But, um, you know, don't lose your momentum. Keep studying. 90% uh, of the material will likely be the same, right? So, uh, and if it's not, it can still be valuable. So just because it's not in the CCNA does not mean it's not valuable. Um, that is something that sometimes uh, I get from students. Well, if it's not on the test, you know, I don't need to care about it. Reality of it is, in the real world, you need to know as, as much as you can uh, to be the most valuable, right? And, uh, you know, the more valuable that you can become as an employee, uh, the more compensation you can demand. Um, and, and the more flexibility you're going to have, right? To have the kind of hours you want, to have the kind of job you want, to have the kind of, you know, work-life balance, um, you know, whatever that thing is that you want in your career, uh, when you provide more value or you're able to provide more value, um, usually it's easier to have that that leverage and be able to um, achieve the things that you want to in your career. <clears throat> so uh, with that, hopefully you guys are going to keep hustling, keep studying, um, and get either the current CCNA or go after that new CCNA um, when some of that material comes out. I'll hopefully be developing some material around uh, you know May to July whenever... Uh, that new course uh, <clears throat> blueprint comes out. Hopefully I'm going to jump on it and uh, hopefully I'll have some time and I'll go ahead and develop some content as soon as possible. Get that out to you guys. So look for that. Feel free to subscribe uh, and get some notifications for that information when it comes out. Uh, but with that, you guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.